Thank you very much. Uh, I guess that by now you have uh, been uh, debriefed by the ministers coming out of the Council already. Yes, uh, on the safe zones, uh, this is uh, something we discussed first of all with the, our Turkish friends, but also with our American partners uh, and obviously uh, here today uh, with the ministers. Uh, I have to say that uh, my impression, but this is my personal impression, is that uh, recent developments uh, of the last uh, days or week or so, and especially uh, the military, uh, the increase of military activities in exactly that part uh, of, uh, of Syria, of northern Syria, uh, might uh, make the plans that uh, our Turkish friends were uh, elaborating uh, relatively, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in need for readjustment. Uh, because the situation on the ground is moving fast and uh, um, the idea of somehow creating safe zones exactly in the area where uh, Daesh is concentrated and the Russian military presence is concentrated might uh, not be really an easy task to, uh, to achieve at the moment. So we will need to rediscuss this uh, with our Turkish friends uh, in the coming days. Um, in general terms, as I told you uh, already and as you very well know, it's not the European Union as such is not involved in military activities in Syria and is not going to be. Um, and uh, let's say that one thing is to explore ways to guarantee humanitarian access also to the north of Syria, which is something in which we are very much engaged. As you know, we have uh, an office uh, in Gaziantep on the Turkish-Syrian uh, border, exactly bordering the area. Uh, that the Turkish authorities indicate as a possible safe zone that has been constantly working uh, to find possible ways for safe humanitarian access to Syria, sometimes with uh, some significant work done. Uh, I was visiting the office in myself uh, in uh, last December with Commissioner Stylianidis. Um, so always in favor of uh, finding ways of uh, increasing humanitarian um, uh, help and assistance inside Syria. Uh, 